Welcome back my fellow machine learners. I'm Bevan and in this video we are finally going to speak about hyperparameters and the difference between parameters and hyperparameters and why hyperparameters are so important. Okay, so remember the big idea is that we want to train our models and then test them so that they generalize. We, 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 we want to find out their they're, how well they generalize. Okay, and we looked at training testing as one idea. And then the other idea, which is superior in my opinion, is K fold cross validation. Okay, so if you'd like to find out more about that, you need to look at the previous videos. And so the idea was to find the best model. So if you had a certain data set, right, there's your X and your Y. These are your input fe uh, features and those are your observations. Then we would we carried out k-fold cross validation on a, using linear regression, neural net, random forest, support vector machine. And then you found which had the lowest cross validation error. And we said, let's choose that model for any future predictions. OK, that's good. That is excellent. And that's the way to do it. And we were comparing different types of models. We were comparing a linear regression with a neural net, with a random forest, right? We were comparing different types of models. Okay. So then, but the question is, and this is what I want, uh, want to stick with you, is that how do you know that was the best linear regression model out of different regression models? And how do you know that was the best neural net? Okay, how do you know that was the best random forest? Yes, for specific default settings, we we could find which was the best model compared with different comparing different models. But what about comparing linear regression with itself by by changing certain parameters or hyperparameters? What about and just looking at a neural net and changing many of its hyperparameters? And to see which is the best neural net. And then once you found the best regression model, the best neural net, the best random forest, then you can compare with the different models. I hope that's not too confusing. So the question is, what is the best linear regression model or the best neural net? And this is where hyperparameters come in. And I'm going to give an example as best as I can. What is a hyperparameter? It's a parameter that controls the learning. I'll explain what that means. So it's like a superior parameter that controls the learning. Okay, it defines higher level concepts about the model, such as the model's complexity, right? It, it decides how complex your model is going to be. And it is generally found by tuning using k-fold cross-validation. So it is, in a sense, what's happening is you set some hyperparameter knobs on your model and then you train it and test it, ca calculate a cross-validation error. You change the knobs, do that again, and you change the knobs and you keep doing it again and again and again until you find the lowest error and you, and you choose that set of hyperparameters. So let's look at an example. Uh, we can use linear regression with the tuning hyperparameter lambda. Actually, this is either called ridge regression, ridge regression or lasso regression, which are types of regression, but with a using a specific kind of hyperparameter. This is also known as regularization. And I'll, I'll give you an int a, a short introduction to regularization and ridge and lasso. But the idea is to understand this, this concept of a hyperparameter. Okay, so in a very simple way, say now you had a data set. We've looked at this a lot now with a single input. I'm just using a very simple example. And here's your data. Okay, your data looks like this. Okay, now we could come up with a number of different models, right, hypothesis b0, y equals b0 plus b1x, okay, which is, as we know, sorry for insulting you, is just a straight line, 
And what we're trying to do in regression, right? This is not a regression video. What we're trying to do is we're trying to learn the parameters. What are these parameters? B0 refers to the cut on the y-axis. And B1 refers to the slope, the gradient of this line. And you can see how you can, you can lift this, this slope up and down, and you can vary it. And as we, every time we vary it, we calculate something called least squares. Or rather, every time you vary this, you calculate the mean squared error. And you vary it and vary it and vary it. And then you, you keep calculating for each different combination of parameters. You calculate your squared error and you find the least squares. And then you select those parameters. Okay, so you've found parameters that best fit the data, right? This model could be a bit more complex. It could even look like this, B0 plus B1X plus B2X2, which would give you a kind of a, let's choose another color, would give you maybe a kind of a curve like that. Or you could choose an even more complex, B0 plus B1X plus B2X2, plus B3X3. And that, you know, could say, okay, now I want to fit the data pretty well. Right? I'm making my model more complex. By the way, this is training data I'm talking about. Okay? Training. Training data. Okay? The point is, guys, that we are looking for these parameters, parameters that best fit the data. And it's found by minimizing, minimizing a cost function. And we just spoke about it. This cost function could be, so we want to minimize, say, a cost function that looks like this. I equals 1 to n of y predict minus y actual squared. Okay? And we want to minimize with respect to these coefficients, whatever your model was right this y predict is obtained so if you were using a linear function then you would put b0 plus b1x into there okay if you were using this quadratic you would put this into there okay so the point is you're trying to minimize a cost function so that you find the parameters that best fit the line okay great okay and then, but, but this is training data. You now take this model and you apply it to test data. And you calculate your, your error. Okay? So, so this is, the question now is, how do we know that this is the best model I can use for training and test for my test data? This is where we, we've now, we found our parameters. We found them. But how do we know it's the best we can do? This is where a hyperparameter comes in. Okay, a hyperparameter. And uh, this is called a lambda hyperparameter. Okay, this is HP, hyperparameter, lambda. And it's used in, like I said earlier, something called regularization. What is regularization? regularization is to say hey i don't i want to i don't want that model to be so good believe it or not on the training data i don't want it to be so good on the training okay what do i mean by that for example say now we chose this model say now we chose that model it fits the training data perfectly its error will be zero it will have an error equal to zero okay but do you really believe that that's that model that's fitting the data so perfectly will do well on new data right there's there's noise here so there's an underlying signal perhaps this model the second model that has this curve in it maybe that one fits it better or maybe this, the, the straight line would fit it better. So we introduce a penalty to this 
cost function, which is a hyperparameter. So, for example, in ridge regression, ridge regression, we are minimizing with respect to beta all our coefficients. We are minimizing this 1 over n, the sum i equals 1 to n of y predict minus y actual. Okay, it, everything's the same, but we're adding a hyperparameter lambda multiplied by b, um, just to make sure I get it right, j squared, where j equals 1 to p. Now, what, what am I talking about here? Well, um, p, what is, let me just do that. p is the number of uh, coefficients. Well, p is actually the number of, of features that we're looking at. But essentially, we are, we are adding this up. Okay, we, don't, don't worry so much about what ridge regression is doing. I'll, I'll make a, a different video for this. But I, what I want you to see is that within this y pred, y predict, we've got all our original uh, coefficients that we're trying to determine, right? But we are now adding a hyperparameter. These are the original parameters. We are now adding a, a hyperparameter that penalizes penalizes uh, the cost function, and what it does is it reduces the beta coefficients to zero. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that if you choose this function with this model and it fits the training data so well, but it fits the test data poorly, then this regularization is going to say, hey, 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 let's reduce some of these coefficients, this parameter to zero, so it plays less of a role so that it's not fitting the training data so well so that it can it can fit the test data better. Does that make sense? So this regularization is adding a hyperparameter so that it reduces the effect of some of these original parameters. It changes them, okay? By adding this penalty term, this is called ridge regression, and it reduces the effect of some of the parameters. So in effect, it is making, it is changing, guys. It's changing the complexity of that model. The other one is lasso, which is minimize with respect to all the coefficients. And I'm not going to reproduce this whole thing. You can just pull that down there. But it adds again, a penalty based on this hyperparameter lambda times the beta j, the absolute value of beta j. Oh, sorry, the sum. I forgot to put in the sum. Thank you for, for noticing that. Okay. Thank you for noticing that. It's this, it's this lambda hyperparameter times the sum of we're adding up all these beta uh, coefficients. Okay? In the same way, in the same way, we're adding the sum of j equals 1 to p. Okay? This is a different kind. This is called a, a lasso. This is actually the L1 norm. Guys, don't worry so much if you don't understand regularization. The idea is not to purely teach regularization. It's to it's to show that this this lambda is a hyperparameter that affects learning. It affects the learning process. It changes the 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 parameter. So a hyperparameter hyperparameter changes the parameters so that you get a better generalization error. Okay. So so you've got the lasso and the ridge regression which 
um, adds a hyperparameter to, to, the, to the, the, the minimizing of the cost function, uh, to the cost function, sorry. And then it changes the beta values so that it gives you a better generalization error. So how do you carry this out in practice? Well, number one, you select your hyperparameter. First of all, let's put it this way. You, you put in a range of your hyperparameter, whatever it is, from a minimum value all the way to a maximum value. Okay? Then, in your algorithm, you, you start from wherever you want. You start from the minimum. You select that minimum. For example, so now we're considering a, a minimum lambda, lambda value. Okay? And then, you run k-fold cross-validation for that specific lambda and you store the error. Then you go to the next hyperparameter value. You carry out k-fold cross-validation. You store that error. You go back to the next one and you carry out k-fold cross-validation and you go you go through each of these values of your your hyperparameter value lambda and you've now got a range of cv errors 1 cv2 cv3 cv4 and you're going to plot it like this you're going to have cv error here and you're going to have a lambda value there okay it's a hyperparameter and then you're going to see, for example, it's going to go something like this, down and then up. Okay, this is often what you see as you vary your lambda hyperparameter. And then what you do is you say, okay, here's my, my cross validation error is the lowest. And so what is my lambda value there? I take that lambda there. Let's call it lambda min, which gives me my smallest cross validation error. Then you take your entire data set okay which includes your training train and test you take your entire data set and you fit your linear regression model to that entire data set with lambda equal to lambda min okay so you will go back now and you will say, okay, now I want to take my entire data set, X and Y, and I want to now find my betas based on lambda min. Okay, does that make sense? So now you'll have a, a new set of coefficients. Your, these are your parameters. They were affected by your hyperparameter. And that should give you a better generalization error than if you didn't have these. Okay? All right. Well, I hope that makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to explain neural net hyperparameters. So stay tuned. And if you have any questions, please post them. And I'll try to respond. Okay, bye-bye.